Hello, everyone. I'm trying to make sure we're all connected and that everyone can hear me. Um, so I would like to start off with a brief introduction. Um, my name is Brittany Key and I am a wedding and event florist. I am also an ag educator. So I teach at the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. Um, I am a Chicago native, so I have been born and raised here and I currently teach at the school that I went to. So super exciting to be an educator, super exciting to be an entrepreneur and I'm very happy to be here and interview and talk with you guys. So um, let's see the question from Emma. Um, my, my The favorite part of my job. Oh, okay. So the, the best part about my job is that I get to create very beautiful arrangements and very beautiful spaces for people that are getting married. Um, it's super exhilarating to have the opportunity and the ability to transform spaces and to be a part of these moments that a lot of people will only have once in a lifetime. So I get so excited when I get to walk into that room and hand a bride her bridal bouquet because that is the first moment and the first glance of what she is to expect for her day. So I get so excited and happy that I get to share in those type of moments. So. Um, let's see that we have another question. Biggest obstacle. Um, one of the big obstacles that I've had to overcome, unfortunately, is um, wow. It's 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 building that capital in order to start the business. Um, for me, I'm not married. Um, I don't come from money, and you know, taking loans out it just seems like an impossible thing that I just don't. I don't want to do. So the the biggest thing for me was I had to work. And by the grace of God, I have had the opportunity to teach and it has given me the opportunity to do the things that I do within my business. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, so building the capital and kind of kind of building that kind of rapport with people is probably the biggest thing I've had to overcome, honestly. Do you have another question? No, not yet. Um, so I guess let's do another question. Uh, I guess a, a little history about me and where I come from. Um, as I told you before, I in the Chicago Act Sciences and um, I met three amazing women that kind of pushed me and propelled me to be what I am today. If it wasn't for Maria Burr telling me to go to the Horticulture Club, I never would have met Julie Reynolds. And if I never met Julie Reynolds, I would never be passionate about horticulture. So I started my career there. Um, I went on to Michigan State where I studied landscape design and construction, um, which was an amazing opportunity because I've, I've learned so much at Michigan State and it was able to take me to different places after graduation. Um, unfortunately, at the time, it, it, was a, it was a recession. And so um, I had to bounce from place to place being a floral specialist and uh, a freelance designer until I uh, got a position at the Dilly Lily up north. And it's this little high end little shop up north. And it was probably the best years of my life until um, Maria Bird passed away. And um, not too long after that, the horticulture teacher at Chicago Act Sciences resigned. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, this is an opportunity co to continue a legacy of someone who was very impactful for you. And this is the opportunity to build a legacy for yourself. So I was fortunate enough to teach and I've been teaching for the last five years. And for the last five years, I've owned my business and it's been probably the best experience that I've had. The hardest, but the very best experience that I've had since um, I've graduated. Um, so trends in the floral industry, trends, uh, wow. So floral walls, big, large installations, hanging installations are huge. Um, another huge trend is blush 
blush and pastel weddings, I think that was something that will be, it will never go away, which is insanity. But people love it. It's beautiful. It's timeless. It's classic. I think over the years we saw a lot of like the organic kind of loose romantic. Um, and now I think we're kind of pulling back into floral on floral. So I think a lot of the bigger trends of just big installations, um, things that you've never saw before uh, or never seen before, excuse me. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. Um, every year something changes. It's a color palette. It is a style. It is a, it is a mood. Um, but the one thing that I've seen consistently and always remains the same is the blush pastel kind of a look. Um, let's see. So training and education. Um, training and education for a florist, um, you only need a certificate. So you don't need to go to school. Um, you don't need, um, you just need minimal training. Uh, for me, I, I've always had, like, I started off in high school, then I, I started just going to floral shops and just letting the, the designers kind of groom me and teach me to do the things that I do today. Um, I, I, I think there's more leverage and more opportunity in owning a business versus um, working in a shop. Although I think, you know, you need to crawl before you walk. So honestly, I think the best thing that you could do if you wanted to be a floral designer is to start off, um, honestly, just working at a shop and work at a shop and work at all levels. Be that person that does sweep, be the person that does take out the trash, be the person that drives, be the person that does play with the flowers. But there's so many different facets that come with flower design that I think a lot of people don't recognize or understand. Um, I think the greatest misconception is that you're playing with beautiful things. And it is far from that. Um, there is a lot of stress and pressure that comes with being a florist because there are people that are spending thousands of dollars and depending on you to create these moments that are contracted. Um, so time is of the essence. You have to carry a lot of weight and you're, the, the, the amount of hours and time that you're spending working in this type of business is phenomenal. So if I'm working an event, it'll start Wednesday. And Wednesday, I have to pick up my flowers. I have to process them. I have to make sure they're opening up and they're blooming and they're hydrating very well. And I have to keep them in the cooler. I have to prep all of my materials. I have to make my load in list and my takedown list. Um, I have to load the van itself. Um, I have to prepare all of the arrangements, the proposals, the, the correspondence between me and the client. Um, and then like my day, the day of the wedding is gonna start seven o'clock in the morning most days. And it's not gonna end until the wedding starts. So around seven o'clock, um, around seven o'clock, I will end up taking my break and then coming back at midnight to do teardown. Um, so it's a it's a long day, but it's, it's 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 the best thing that could ever you could ever do when you see the smiles that's on your client's face. Um, I think the best 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 part of the job is to view some of the beautiful flowers and the different varieties. Like you have no idea what you can get from different places across the country, even as some of your local markets. And so having the ability to go to a lot of these wholesalers and just kind of look at the their pool list and just looking at some of the new varieties of Helleboris, of anemones, of hydrangea, of roses, it's just, it's beautiful. So I, I, I'm a flower lover and a flower enthusiast. And so I truly, truly, truly appreciate um looking and viewing at the the beautiful ambiance of everything that's around let's see uh stress so handling stress for big events um that takes time i think uh the first event that i ever did i was so overwhelmed because i didn't want to mess up and I think after a while, you just kind of figure things out and you just kind of wake up and say, you know what? You are the one person standing in between glory and happiness for this bride. And that's not the truth, but that's how I think of it. So um, I try my best to just focus really hard on creating these magical moments because that's what I would want someone to do for me if I was getting married. So the way I handle stress is I, I kind of buckle down and boss up. 
Like I just, I don't have the time or the, the ability to take any time to be freaking out or stressed when things happen, things go wrong and they always do. I just navigate through that because the client doesn't have the time and I don't have the time to, to do, to mess up. So, um, I breathe, I breathe, I focus, I stay in the game and, you know, honestly, it, it, it always works out. It always works out. Pricing arrangements. So, um, pricing arrangements can be tricky, but, uh, the trick to it is that you have to account for what you're paying for your product. So if you're getting in a fresh product, you're going to do a three to five time markup on that fresh product. So anything that is perishable, um, you're going to multiply by five or by three or in between if you want to. Um, when pricing like your hard goods, like your um, your vases, your glassware, um, you're going to do a two to three time markup on that one. Um, after you're doing your markups on your vases or your flowers itself, um, you're going to have to factor in your labor. So it's the cost of your product, the cost of your labor, and all the markups. That's 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 how you're going to do your pricing. And that doesn't include taxes, that doesn't include delivery, and that doesn't even include the additional labor that it will take to set up, tear down, or manipulate these flowers to a space and place that is going to be conducive to what the client needs. So just be aware of that, that, that ser a service like this can be quite expensive. It, it adds up quickly, um, but you have to, you have to budget and you have to include the, the, that, that pricing in there because honestly you will lose money if you're not marking up properly and if you're not accounting for your costs. Um, my favorite flower of all time is the peony and it's the peony because it represents prosperity. It is the symbol of my business. It is the first flower I have ever fallen in love with. So I love all varieties of peonies. Um, they only come around in the summer. You can get a few of them during the winter, but they're most beautiful during the summer because you can get them locally. Um, so the peony is my all time favorite flower of choice. And I couldn't imagine having any other flower be my favorite. So, mm, does most of your business come from weddings? Oh, so yes. Um, actually, it, it's half and half. The majority of my business comes from weddings and funerals. And actually, the, there's a larger market in funerals than there is weddings. Unfortunately, it's it's sad. Um, I don't I don't publicize my funeral work on my website because my brand is mostly weddings and events. So what people or a lot of my clientele does know that I create funeral work. So the, the majority of my 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 revenue for my business comes in from weddings, but I get a lot of work from funerals as well. So flowers right now due to COVID-19, um, a lot of flower farms have completely gotten rid of their product. Um, there's a lot of product that has been thrown away and disposed of. Um, weddings have been canceled. And so product that you have bought right before all of this has occurred was either disposed of or given away to local hospitals or local places to kind of just bring some cheer to people. But right now, flowers, the flower industry is in, in dire stress. Um, they're still growing, they're still supplying, but I believe that after this point, a lot of our flowers will cost more um, only because um, of the severity of the issue right now. And the longer we go um, with the stay, stay in place or stay in our shelter situation, um, the longer um, the, the more dire the situation will be for a lot of our growers. Um, so even getting flowers now is practically impossible for me. And even trying to go to the wholesaler to pick up anything is it's sad because you have to drop it off and pick it up and you can't walk the coolers and your favorite varieties aren't even available. And if they are, they have to ship the whole box. I have to pay for a whole box to even get one bunch. And that's just not conducive to business. So since I'm a non-essential worker at this moment, 
I'm not purchasing flowers, ordering flowers, and I'm actually looking for new vendors just to kind of be on top of the situation when my weddings kind of start back in motion. Because right now, um, a lot of people are postponing moving their weddings to either later on in the year or next year. And I'm not sure how, what's the availability on flowers and how it's gonna look. Um, I just try to stay up with looking at the videos from different vendors and kind of talking to my vendors and say, hey, what's the availability looking like? How are things growing in certain parts of the country? How are you making sure that we're pulling product from safe places? And what are we doing in the effect that when it gets here, how are we sanitizing it? How are we making it safe for people to receive it when things kind of slowly get back in motion? Because I know that we're going into a new normal. We're not going back to what things used to be. So flowers is flowers are funny right now. And this is a situation where um, we don't have all the answers. And I try not to have all the answers because it changes weekly, it changes daily. Um, I'm just trying to be very encouraging and very on top of um, how things are growing and how things are being produced and what I can do to be the best um, florist I can be for my clients that are sad because they have to change their dates and disappointed and um, don't know what's the next steps. Uh, <laughs> the best part about being an act teacher is that I get to do what my act teachers did for me. I get to inspire. I get to um, be that person that, you know, the kids can confide in, that can come to, um, to just get them pumped about ag education and get them really pumped about just their futures in general. I mean, honestly, if I didn't have Lucy O'Shaw, Maria Bird, Julie Reynolds, I, I don't know where I would be. I could probably be in medicine or I could probably be, you know, a designer somewhere doing something else, but I, I, I never would have found my passion in horticulture. So I, I, I really leaned on my ag teachers and I, I really appreciate being an ag teacher in this moment and having that same ability to affect someone's life as I was affected. Um, my time is up, but I just want to give you a little advice before I leave. Um, I think that you should always pursue what you love most. I think that if you're passionate about something, I think you should pursue that before pursuing a dollar sign. Money is beautiful. It's, it'll take you places, it'll buy you things, but it won't be a fulfilling thing in your life. So for me, horticulture is everything to me. And no matter if I'm a teacher, if I'm a wedding designer, if I am a greenhouse manager, it doesn't matter as long as I am contributing to the world as the world needs to be contributed to. So um, final words is um, be passionate, be excited to do the things that you wanna do and never, never give up because you know, things will happen, life happens just like it is now, but I'm hopeful because there's always light on the other side of suffering. So thank you all for having me today. I really hope I gave you a little bit of insight on ag education and being a floral designer. And thank you so much for this opportunity. And I hope you have an amazing day.